But whenever this pandemic, whenever this crisis is over, which just so you know, it will be over. Whenever this pandemic, this crisis, this obstacle that we have in front of us is over, your people that follow you, your people that are led by you are going to remember every single thing that you did during this time. More importantly, they're going to remember every single thing you didn't do in this time. So if you are sitting at home with your family, quarantine, like that's great. Spend that time with your family, but you have to set aside a couple of hours each day just to reach out to the people that see you as a leader and make sure that they know that you're at least thinking about them, no less that you've put processes in place to be able to help them and that they're not going to be negatively impacted by the world shutting down. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. My name is Tyler Jack Harris, and I am here with... I am Nathan Wells. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! <laughs> That's right. This is the Sales Wolves podcast. This is episode 163. And the topic of today's episode is opportunity in chaos. It's been a while since we've had any chaos. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. We're in the midst of it. We are in the middle of it right now. I think every human being on the planet is feeling it right now. Absolutely. And I want to start off just by prefacing that anything that we talk about in regards to the opportunity that everybody has during this pandemic or crisis, whatever you want to label it as, uh, we are certainly, certainly, certainly not making light of the very, very, very difficult and dire situations that people are in. Um, either that be with their health or the health of, health of their loved ones, or that be uh, based on the industry that they're in and job layoffs or uh, jobs that have been put on hold or on pause, uh, especially in the um, food and hospitality uh, space. So a lot of what we're talking about um, with the opportunity is not necessarily for you that just got told you need to go home and hey, you know, just hustle your way, you know, back in. Obviously that's not a reality for some people, but there is still opportunity in this downtime to do things and to set things in motion that once this does subside, um, you will be able to hit the ground absolutely running and set yourself up for some of the best months and, and really the best 2020, uh, the best year of your life, right? Absolutely. I want to make sure people don't uh, you know jump on here and they're like, oh, you don't understand what I'm going through. You're right. I don't. Um, and none of us do. Every situation, every person is dealing with this differently and is faced with a different uh, set of circumstances. So just wanted to put that on the front end. But <clears throat> this is the Sales Wolves podcast. And, you know, historically, it's a lot of salespeople that watch and listen. And so we want to speak specifically to those of you that are in sales and then really want to speak to those leaders uh, within sales organizations, whether that's a sales manager, whether that's a CEO, whether that's a you know, VP of sales or whether you just have a team of people that you're leading. Uh, we want to speak uh, to you, too. And to start it off, Nathan, why don't you just give a little bit of uh, a rundown of like what you and I have been doing uh, over the past week? Um, the touch points that we're making and the um, impact that we're seeing it having. Absolutely. Um, and by, by the way, this is Nathan Wells, one of my absolute best friends in the world. Um, one of the founders of this company that we're in and uh, just an all around OK person. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> um, you know, with what Tyler and I did, <clears throat> you know, as we as we faced something that we've never faced before, I, it, it kind of naturally happened, but as I was thinking about what we need to do and as we brainstormed, it, it took us back to the basics of what we did when we built our business. And 10 years into to a company that is now in, in 47 states, my role has changed a lot. And um, so we had to 
really just restructure and and find a plan of attack and and what that was was going back to the basics of doing what I did when we built the business yeah. and and that was that was basically going to a level that locked arms with the the people that we work with that are in the field and it was doing exactly what they're doing and and supporting them um, but with being limited because of the social distancing, we have to get in front of people as salespeople. We needed to be in front of people and, and in large groups. And, yeah. in yeah. large groups. And we weren't able to do that. But w as we started thinking through, we are beings, we are human beings that are relational. And one of the things that, that we had to do is just double down on the efforts that we were already doing, which was calls, uh, making calls is a huge part of what we're doing. But also looking back six months prior to business and relationships that we've already done business with and with what we do, we don't see those people again really for another year and a half or two years with the way our sales cycle works. But in order for us to be better, having a genuine concern and care for those individuals uh, was, was imminent and it was a pr it, we made it a priority and, and we saw that. Um, you know, and that, that is one thing that we, we have definitely improved in and we've seen where it was an opportunity. Um, sometimes I think we can think about our next deal, our next deal, our next deal. And what this has forced us to do is think about our existing deals, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that we've already done and those relationships that are critical. Um, and you know, the thing about that is everything is relational. And I've always said the best thing about business is people, and sometimes the worst thing about business can be people. Um, but it, it's not always what you can do, but who you need to be through a time like this. And that's what we did, is we buckled down on our basics, which was a company founded on mission, vision, and values. And, and we just got back to the core of who we are and the heart of what our, our business is and buckled down, locked arms with our with our guys and went to work right beside them. And I think that did a lot of things in, in the leadership aspect mm -hmm. of what we did. Oh, yeah. I know you were absolutely, Tyler just went bananas as he always does. His work ethic is through the roof and and led, led our guys, led me with what you were doing. Um, so it's, uh, I love that. And <clears throat> one thing I was in a meeting yesterday with our business partner, Joseph Caldwell, who, who you guys know, <clears throat> and, and he was talking about, um, you know, a lot of times someone will say, Hey man, you know, it's in personal, this is just business. And what do you know is about to happen when someone says to you, Hey man, it's just business. It's not personal. You're about to get screwed. And what we know and what our organization thrives on is the fact that it's all personal. Every aspect of it is personal. Just like Nathan said, it all gets back to those uh, relationships. And what I love about what Nathan said is that this isn't a conversation about a crisis or a pandemic. This is a conversation when you hit any obstacles in your business, when you hit any obstacles in your sales process, that it's always about getting back to the basics. Uh, but never has that been more important uh, than right now. And so when he talked about us being able to reach out to those uh, current existing previous clients, uh, but also the prospective clients, the calls that we were having our coordinators make across the country were just genuine calls to just touch base and see how they're doing. Just let them know that we were thinking about them, letting, letting them know that, man, we've been praying for you. Um, you know, how are, how are things going? Uh, just, you've been on, you've been heavy on my mind. I just wanted to reach out and, and tell you that I am so appreciative of what you guys are doing during this crisis and that we're here more than ever, uh, to support you. And just that one little, like it's a minute, minute and a half, two minute conversation. It just solidifies and cements you in their mind as someone that cares. I want to take that a step further. You didn't just call our guys you you did call them you got a sense of what's going on you checked in with them you cared about them but you said hey let's put a list of these clients that have needed to reschedule or cancel 
and let me call them with you. You sit on the line. Let me, as a leadership role, do all I can to help you push business forward. And you did that. And for, for our people, the morale throughout our entire organization to have us making those difficult calls, because they were difficult. Mm-hmm. They were very difficult, um, you know, navigating the risk of moving forward, uh, being that we we're going to have to have some interaction with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we, had, we have adhered to the CDC guidelines and we've done it in safe practice methods. And we can still move forward, but to navigate those calls, man, you did that. You you engaged that, and you led the charge in our organization through something that we've never experienced before, which is an, an extreme hardship. And you know the the thing about that is, in sales and being successful, it's all mindset. And to to lead, the biggest thing that I think an individual can do in leadership is to, is to take action and, and to look internal first and then move forward and, and lead the way. And, and man, you, you did that. Yeah. And, and really like what I was referencing was more on like those calls to the clients. Um, but that's the exact next point that, that I wanted to touch on is exactly what, where Nathan went with it. Um, because for us, honestly, it's more important um, our relationship with our clients, yes, that's that's huge. But our relationship with our agents is everything. And so those calls that we were making to the agents, we just split them up like, here, you take these, I'll take these. And those were extremely personal. And it was just me calling and Nathan calling saying, hey, man, this thing is different city by city, no less state by state. So just tell me what you're seeing. Tell me what you're experiencing. How are you feeling through this? Like, how are you doing through this? Like, is there anxiety? Is there fear? Uh, what are you concerned about? What's what's heavy on your mind? Just li- uh, literally allowing them to take some of that weight and put it on our shoulders and allowing us to carry some of that for them. And then like, like Nathan said, not just stopping there, but saying, hey, we've got some ideas. Uh, we've put some scripting in place. We've put some processes in place where we think we can help you. So, you know, how many places that have you had to have uh, reschedule over the last week? Six, great, let's get on the phone and let's call all six and let me call on your behalf. So we were doing three-way calls where we would have them mute because I wanted them to be able to hear that interaction. I didn't want them to feel uncomfortable or with, you know, is Tyler gonna get into a situation where it becomes combative because they're like, I just talked to Joe and mm-hmm. you know, I told him that we couldn't do this. Why are you calling me now? But to call from a leadership, um, uh, vantage point to be able to say, Hey, I'm calling from our, from our headquarters. I uh, just wanted to touch base with you, let you know that we have put in some extreme measures to abide by the CDC guidelines that we have changed some of our standard operating procedures during this crisis. And the fact that the people that we're calling, they don't have the luxury of not showing up to work and making sure that that person that we know, uh, or that person that we're talking to knows that we don't have that luxury either. Like if they're showing up, we're showing up. If they're coming to work, we're coming to work. And not only that, but we are making ourselves even more available. But there's another side to that that I think is important. And this is specifically for the leaders that are out there, anybody that's, um, you know, has influence over people and whether that's with a sales team or whether that's, you know, just a group of people like friends um, that you consider yourself a leader. You know, in those conversations with our agents, my number one priority was to make sure that they knew, like if I could feel any hesitation, and and one of the agents just flat out said, he's like, man, I think, thank you guys for like putting these processes in place. These are great ideas. He's like, but you know, do you, you, are you saying you think it's in our best interest to be meeting with people one-on-one right now? And I could instantly sense that he was fearful um, of this virus and of, spreading it to his family and of coming down with it. And he's a young, healthy guy. Which is a legit concern. Legitimate. So for me, for me to be able to tell him, look, your family's health and safety is 100% the priority. And if you don't feel comfortable with me making these calls, trying to get you back into that meeting that you got um, postponed or rescheduled or canceled, then that's okay. That there is zero, zero negative energy from our home office towards anyone 
that during this crisis felt like it was important just to quarantine themselves with their family and spend that time being safe. Like that's perfectly fine. Your March um, production is not going to be viewed negatively if you weren't out there still doing what we were doing in January and February. Um, and man, I can't tell you how many of those conversations were just so powerful because you could feel it was just like this, <sighs> because there's pressure. Like anytime you're in a sales role, there's always pressure to meet your quotas, to exceed your goals, to make things happen, to show up on the leaderboard and to be in a situation where you have this like pull inside your, your heart of, I need to go do what I'm supposed to do. But I also am fearful of not knowing what is really going on because obviously, you know, the news and the media are making it extremely complicated to really even know what's going on. There's this pull of, do I go perform? And like I've said a million times, do I do it anyways? Or do I need to be careful and, and take precautions to, you know, help the risk and, and, and alleviate the risk for my family's safety? And, and a couple of those conversations, like they were just so grateful just to hear those words. They're like, man, they're like, it's, it's, it's so amazing to hear you say that. Like that really, really, really uh, means something to me. And what I want to speak to specifically is for those of you that are leaders, this time, this period that we're going through and, and look, it may be next week. Everything may be back to business as usual. I sure, I certainly hope so. Um, but it may be next month. But whenever this pandemic, whenever this crisis is over, which just so you know, it will be over. Whenever this pandemic, this crisis, this obstacle that we have in front of us is over, your people that follow you, your people that are led by you are going to remember every single thing that you did during this time. More importantly, they're going to remember every single thing you didn't do in this time. So if you are sitting at home with your family, quarantine, like that's great. Spend that time with your family, but you have to set aside a couple of hours each day just to reach out to the people that see you as a leader and make sure that they know that you're at least thinking about them, no less that you've put processes in place to be able to help them and that they're not going to be negatively impacted by the world shutting down. Um, it's, it's so important. And that's why when we say opportunity and chaos, like that is the opportunity amidst this chaos. It's the opportunities to solidify those relationships. Like some of those conversations that I've had this week, I know a year from now, five years from now, that relationship will be radically different because of one phone conversation that I had with them yesterday. It'll be radically different because I took the time, the effort, the energy, to make those calls and just let them know that I'm thinking about them, that I'm praying for them, that I care about their well being. And that's something when you talk about loyalty, uh, we talk about loyalty a little differently around here, and we won't go all the way into that. Uh, but that's where loyalty is created. Loyalty is not created when everything's great and things are booming and numbers are through the roof and we're breaking records and we're over our quotas. Like, that's not where loyalty is created. Loyalty is created in the mess it's created in the darkness and it's created through that opportunity and chaos absolutely man it's times it's in difficult times uh when the pressure is on that determines and and shows someone's true character and um it is a time for a leader to be able to buckle down strengthen yourself and prove with your actions your words and your heart who you are and what you're made of. And um, it's quite simple, actually. It's just very simple. Yeah. It's uh, you look inward and, you know, I will say, I will say this too. Is it easy? No, it's not always easy. In a time like this, there were things that I thought about that I needed to do that I had fear. There's no doubt about it. I had fear, um, but I had a choice to make. Do I, do I succumb to that or do I power through it and do it anyway? And I think in a role of leadership, we're faced with thoughts, ideas, things we know to do that we allow our brains to play this mental ping pong. Hmm. And if you give yourself more than just a few seconds of that mental ping pong, you've already lost. Yeah. 
And so if a thought, an idea, an action you need to take to help lead and display what you're made of comes to mind and you don't act on it immediately, um, you've lost, man. So I challenge people, when you think of something great to do and it impacts your business, it impacts a relationship in your business, don't hesitate on it. Do not procrastinate on that. Take action now. Yeah, and, and the way I really have looked at that this week, um, you know, I feel like God will, will prompt you and I feel like God will give you this kind of gut feeling every now and then. Um, and this week it's been constant and, and it's just a subtle little, I wonder how Jim's doing. And in that moment you have a choice. You can call Jim or you can be like, I'll get to him later. I wonder how he is doing. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, but I don't know because I haven't put the effort to reach out to him. And so the importance of being able to feel that urge, feel that, you know, down in your gut, have that thought into your head and act on it again, that's where the loyalty is going to come from. That's where the power of those relationships is going to be cemented forever. And so the last thing I wanted to really uh, touch on, and this is for people that are in really all business, but specifically sales is there's this quote that I've been saying a lot lately, a guy, Marquise, um, when we were in, oh, in so uh, Utah, uh, that upgrade your human event with Steve Weatherford, uh, just said it in passing, like it wasn't a big deal. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Say that one more time. And he said, when you choose to be a lifelong learner, you don't get to pick the lessons. When you choose to be a lifelong learner, so good. you don't get to pick the lessons. And man, I feel like I'm learning so many lessons throughout this uh, crisis, which creates that opportunity. And one of those is this realization for some of you that are, that are feeling the um, effects of it right now in a negative way, and that is you always have to perform to the best of your abilities because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So when you're a salesperson and you've slacked off for a couple of days, you've slacked off for a couple of weeks, maybe you just took it easy for a month. God forbid that be February. You're screwed. And that sucks. But if you look at that and change your perspective on that and have this crisis teach you that lesson of holy crap, moving forward, I will never, ever, ever put myself, I will never, ever, ever put my family in a situation where because of my efforts and lack of effort, something out of my control was able to come in and devastate us. And there are people out there right now that financially are being devastated. My question for those is, what were you doing in February? What were you doing in January? What were you doing in December? And more importantly, what could you have been doing in December, January, and February so that when this did hit, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it wasn't ideal, but you were able to survive through it with maybe not the level of stress that you have now. And so as we come out of this crisis, to have that perspective and to have that motivation and drive so that the rest of your entire life, nothing can come in your way that you're not prepared for. Like when you look at the statistics, it, I was reading statistics yesterday and statistics are what statistics are. What is it? You know, 40% of statistics are made up or 120% of statistics are made up, whatever, whatever that, whatever that saying is. Um, when you look at the statistics, 80% of Americans cannot survive for two weeks, 80%. And I think it was like 40% don't have a thousand dollars set aside a thousand 40% of the people in America, the greatest country on earth do not, sorry, Haley, do, <laughs> uh, do not have a thousand dollars set aside, <laughs> do not have a thousand dollars set aside so that if something catastrophic does happen, they'll be okay. That's not, that's not the way you're supposed to live. Like living paycheck to paycheck is an absolute death sentence. And if there's anything out of this opportunity from chaos that we can learn is that we have to get our finances in order. We have to get our business in order. We have to get our daily routines, our daily 
tactics that we're uh, uh, implementing towards our business to such a place where that if the world shut down tomorrow, I'll be fine. Like that's part of the way we've been able to operate at a high level this week is because we've taken personal responsibility for our finances. We've taken personal responsibility with our business. We've taken personal responsibility for the things that we knew all along that we were supposed to be doing. And yes, just as easy as it is to do that, it's even easier not to, but because we did in these moments where it could have been devastating for us, we were able to have that energy to reach out to those agents. We were able to have the energy to reach out to those prospective clients, previous clients, current clients, because we're not paralyzed by fear. We're not paralyzed where, how am I going to feed my family next week? If this thing goes on for another two weeks, how am I going to survive? Like when you're in that survival mode, nothing, nothing, nothing matters. Nothing matters other than how am I going to survive? But when you've taken full, full personal responsibility for your finances and just for your life in general, when something catastrophic like this happens, you're able to operate in that uncertainty. You're able to still f at least function amidst all of the chaos going on around you. And I can't tell you the peace that that brings to your heart, to your mind. Um, and that is what enables you to still go out and do the things that you know you're supposed to do right now. Because had, you know, I've been in a situation where I'm like, holy crap, like, what am I going to do? Like, I wouldn't have been able to make those calls. And if I did make those calls, they would have been half hearted. They wouldn't have had the level of um, emotion that needed to go into them, the level of understanding and awareness that needed to go into them. And I wouldn't have been able to uh, do the fair justice that that person on the other end of the phone call needed from me because I wouldn't have been in a place to give it. Like if my cup is empty, I can't call people and pour into them. But because Nathan and I have taken full personal responsibility to make sure that our cups are full and overflowing, we have something to give. And that's what we want for you guys. If you're in a situation right now where you're listening to me and you're like, yeah, easy for you to say, well, it is easy for us to say because we've done it. But all that means is that again, the title of this episode, Opportunity and Chaos, is the opportunity for you to now have that perspective moving forward so that you're never put in this position ever again, that you never put your family in this position ever again. And that to me is the most important thing that you can get out of this podcast. That's great stuff, man. Anything that else? really good. You know, yeah, I will end with this. And Caitlin got me thinking this morning a little bit when she was joking about her husband made a comment about he was going to take his non-essential butt up the road to go do something. And I, it just made me laugh. And, you know, we, we have, uh, in the last several weeks, two weeks in particular, we've, we've kind of been labeling essential and non-essential, hmm. uh, hmm. with businesses and different things that we do. And, you know, what, what I started thinking about just a few minutes ago is never before has our actions and the things that we do, every little detail of that been, evident that they're all essential yeah. all the actions that we do all the things that we do the way we let our mind think um it's all essential and we all are essential there is no non-essential element to business to mm -hmm. sales um but to really prepare yourself to move forward man protecting the mind is the most powerful thing we can do and we are conditioned as humans to see in things um what we've trained ourselves to see by the television shows that we watch, by the media that we watch, by the things that we allow into our life, those condition us to see either opportunity, defeat, fear, or whatever it may be. And so, you know, I think if I have the opportunity to speak to anyone at any time, it's always going to be to strengthen your mind and Two ways you do that is just the information you put into yourself through books, seminars, podcasts, and then also the people you associate with. So, and and also it it a hundred percent is the things that you're allowing in. But what I can tell you is in those phone calls to people where I was just calling to touch base, see how they're doing, let them know that I care. When I was speaking to them, I was also speaking to myself. 
Absolutely. So when I was telling them, Hey, we're going to make it through this. I was also telling myself, Hey, Tyler, you're going to make it through this. And when you have those conversations over and over and over, you start to actually like believe it. That's, that's a fact <laughs> in, in training with what I've done. When I think I really know how to do something well myself, I really don't learn how to do it until I've taught someone else how to do it. Mm -hmm. Cause you really break it down and, and see why you do what you do. So that's, that's yeah, awesome. there's a, there's a old podcast. It wasn't too long ago, a few weeks ago. Um, it may be a few months ago. They all run together. Um, uh, but it, was the title was it was uh, if you need it be it so right now you have this opportunity what do I need man I need I need help okay give help I need hope great give hope I need certainty great give somebody else certainty I need relief great give somebody else relief and it's not the reciprocity of you know, I called this person and, and, and put some hope back into their life. And now the universe is going to work in a way to where someone calls me and does that for me. It's in the process of giving that person hope that you give it to yourself. It. Again, it's from that overflow. And so the last thing I want to mention, uh, someone posted on Instagram and it literally, it just pissed me off, um, what they said. And they said, you, you know, got mad? Yeah, I just not mad, but frustrated, just like frustrated, frustrated that somebody was putting this out into the world on social media and knowing the power of social media and how people receive that and take that as truth. They were talking to, um, you know, people that are in college and they said, hey, college students, take a look at the list of essential occupations right now those are the jobs that you want to have. Those are the careers that you need to be working towards. And I was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, so, so when my daughter's a senior in college, if she was a senior in college right now, you're telling me that she needs to go work at a grocery store for her to feel like she's going to have a safe career. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. It's not, Hey, look at these essential functions, these essential careers that are now still able to operate amidst all this crisis. It's look at yourself and look at what you ultimately want to do or the direction that you're headed in and figuring out how to make it essential, no matter what. And the fact that people were able to see that and that it may have like just put a little bit of a, a curveball into someone's trajectory of where they were headed in their life. Like, Oh, well, I want to go into this career field, but maybe I should, you know, do something that's more essential. Everything's essential. <laughs> Everything is essential. And the most essential thing on this planet is the thing that makes you come alive. The most essential career that you could possibly have is the career that you're passionate about, that you enjoy doing, that you absolutely wake up every morning with your hair on fire to jump out of bed and get started doing. That is what's essential. So America doesn't need more first responders. Yes, they do. Teachers. Yes, they do. But more importantly, they need people that wake up every day feeling alive and feel as though what they are doing is essential, no matter what it's classified as by the government. It's all essential and it's all important. It's just how you treat that, which you are doing as to whether or not it's essential. Awesome, man. Well, I just want to say thank you for the viewers uh, and everybody that came on. I was a guest here with you today yeah, and I don't know if I said much that will help anybody, For but sure I was did. happy to be here. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And with that, guys, this is episode 163 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I am Tyler Jack Harris, and I am here with Nathan Wells. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow!